On a Saturday morning across Fiji, local markets are filled to capacity with fresh produce from its lush environment. Local eggplants, coriander, pineapple, watermelons and other vegetables line the stalls in local markets. In particular, this vegetable, the ota, has been prepared for sale by the women of Nassau and has traveled kilometers from the interior of Tai Levu to be sold in the market today for a dollar a bundle. In the Pacific Islands, the marketplace system is the way of life for many women who earn essential cash income for the survival of their families. The journey of this vegetable begins in the highlands of Tai Levu in the village of Nassau. Nestled in the thick vegetation in the province of Tai Levu, the village of Nassau is just a two-hour drive from Suva City. Yet, there is no electricity in the village, and women play an active role in providing for their families through the marketplace system. The first half of this journey begins with the women of Nassau rising before sunrise and feeding their families, then making the long winding track through thick vegetation to harvest this green fern called ota to sell at city or town markets for their income. This is what is commonly known as mbasa, derived from the word mbasa. <laughs> Ganandro <laughs> The practice of Mbasa is often passed on to women and girls in successive generations of the family with no prospect of improved conditions or more secure incomes. The women of Nassau travel treacherous bush tracks and spend hours harvesting and preparing their cash crops. Then it's another early morning start in the cold, dark and thick fog of Tailewu. This truck starts its pickup route at Nassau. Children are wrapped in warm clothes in anticipation of the open vehicle ride. One truck to at least nine to ten men, women and children, plus their cargo, is a death trap. Space is limited and the young men are reduced to stand on the back of the truck and grab the rails for support for two to three hours in the cold. Dona Marama, when I can make in a market, 
sando la vitu dalo kuna makete ana tutu muki mendo bulu bulu taken Rural women working as food, producer, distributor and trader face the additional challenges of unreliable and hazardous transport arrangements, travelling often in the dark, cold, wet and difficult hours of night, and very early morning by road, sea, river, on foot or horseback, in bad weather and even in times of disaster. Rural women vendors produce, distribute and trade in fresh food products in weekly cycles, commencing mid to late week. Some plan and cooperate in village groups to overcome a multitude of supply chain problems from farm to market. The final part of the journey ends here in the marketplace where unfortunately these women are battling inequality everywhere. Poor, dangerous and dysfunctional infrastructure, security and transport and disaster risk and recovery that undermine vendors' guarantees of fair returns, reliability of incomes and the realization of women's potential for economic empowerment. These women are on the brink of poverty or already in poverty. The income that they earn each day is crucial to meeting basic needs, like education for children. Market trade is the only way the rural and poor majority of Pacific Island women can earn essential cash income, but it's no easy feat. The work of trading on markets directly as producer or through reselling involves serious hardships and hazards. Very long working hours in crowded, dirty, poorly lit and ventilated spaces, water supply and toilets are barely adequate and often unreliable. Women and children brave the elements to protect their produce. It's do or die. The women of Nassau are considered rural vendors. They sell in the perimeters of the market one to three days a week, and they are not permitted membership of the vendor organizations. Poor urban women resellers are silenced by male leadership. Men employed as managers, cleaners, and fee collectors tend to bully and belittle women and often embezzle their fees. Formal and informal security guards extort protection money. Marginalized male youth, drug and alcohol affected, congregate and persuade and coerce women to donate loose cash. Rural producer vendors experience the greatest marginalization in the markets, with no option but to sell outdoors, outside and around main market shelters. Kimsai <laughs> Bakana Dolodoli Lotu, Nabuli, Patalakina Nimim Bulani Vuvale, Nimbulni Valley, Cocimi Lot Mikino Mikimi Vangara, and Basta, Patalakina Sony Livali. Sang and Vakanikim Mother Tikulomani Valley, Motuai to Mother and Renata Matis in Modivina. Sa kerechunga virto mendo mandanga na vale vaka mekim dole mode kina mekim so mai ilu kim do mode tik mena wai da blisie ilu sintelang ada sa sentina
walked out from the main buildings in the evenings from 6 p.m. to 6 a.m., they must sleep overnight on the pavements around the market, exposed to the elements, but also having to watch over produce and to wake early morning to compete for the strategic selling spots. Municipalities very rarely consult or plan with vendors or their representatives. Instead, they pass bylaws and rules that are top directive and intended to install authority, law and order, minimizing tension between inside and outside vendors, but also turning a blind eye to the beggars, criminals and drug and alcohol affected men who frequent markets and prevail upon women vendors to give them coins. <laughs> Mostly, my flowers, I grow them at home. My dad's place yeah, in Wenbuku. We had a farm there. Yeah, and uh, then I get flowers from the ladies in the Wenbuku Road. I collect them when I come to the market. I hired a van, then I collect the flowers from the ladies on, in Wenbuku Road. It's a very hard job for us. We have to fetch our waters from inside the market, carry waters from inside and bring it outside. And uh, we have to, otherwise we have to pay the wheelbarrow boys to fetch our waters for two dollars for one, three buckets a load and get it out. And during sunny, when it's a hot sun, our flowers are usually damaged and uh, we can't get a good sale in our flowers because we don't have a shade and uh, that's very hard. And during rainy weather, it's hard for us because uh, we are in the rain selling. There's no shade here. Yeah. And uh, in the night, we sleep there to look after our flowers. There's no security provided for us from the um, city council. So we have to look after our own flowers in the night. And we have to sleep on the floor in the market, yeah, outside. We have to have some money. I, uh, we, I have to look after my son. Many women vendors have to care for their young children as they work, adding to their multitasking burden, strategies and risks. Suva Market Research in 1994 recorded an average of 400 vendors daily. In 2012, Suva City Council reports figures of 1,500 to 2,000 vendors on peak selling days. That's Fridays and Saturdays. The governance and administration of Fiji's markets has changed little over the past five decades. The swelling numbers of people working as market vendors is characterized by higher ratios of women vendors to men, four to one. Women vendors are typically small and struggling operators, while men tend to consolidate their control over multiple selling spaces. The enduring commitment of thousands of poor women to these highly demanding routines for the specific purpose of earning regular cash incomes is one of the most urgent yet largely overlooked development problems of the Pacific region, and a critical entry point for poverty reduction and women's economic empowerment. Women manage their cash incomes differently to men, prioritizing the basic needs of their families and community. 
However, most women market vendors do not have access to saving facilities and few have real control over their incomes. Husbands and children often press them to hand over cash even during the working day. In the worst cases, women's failures to meet men's demand for cash, often for his leisure or pleasure, can result in him committing physical violence and verbal abuse against her. This is reported in all market surveys, suggesting it's not exceptional. At the inaugural planning workshop for UN Women's PIM project in Fiji, young male market managers referred to rural women vendors as a bunch of unruly and troublemaking women carrying a whole lot of rubbish into town. Unfriendly and insensitive market managers, rules and regulations cause great suffering amongst women who struggle to maintain their dignity, manage multiple health, safety and security risks in order to make adequate cash income to keep their family afloat. Well, one of the constraints at the moment is uh, the place that uh, they are selling their produce. Uh, when they get the produce from the, from the village or from the farm, it's really fresh. Eh? So when they come to the market, they are permanent stall inside the building and other temporary stalls outside. And uh, there are other spaces on the basement of the market they are marked to sell produce. The fee paid are the same, say $3.40. If, if, if that is the case, why don't they, they differ the, the fee, say, for those who are less chance of getting a temporary stall to be less compared with the, you know, when they are selling on the basement of the, of the veranda. Most of the time, uh, women uh, say they are left behind in development. Uh, especially when, while I work, uh, it seems that uh, a lady seems to be treated as a, as a second class. Nowhere in Fiji are rural vendors included in the existing market vendors associations, municipal markets, so their specific needs and concerns are not voiced or heard, and they have little or no access to or influence over market management. <laughs> Women vendors are the majority, but not in solidarity in their struggle for better conditions. They have few male advocates. Local government leaders and administrators are not gender sensitized. They do not recognize the important role of markets in local economic development or the role of vendors in poverty prevention. They do not acknowledge that substantial daily local government revenues are collected through fees and taxes paid by vendors, mostly women. There is little or no recognition of the potential of markets or political will to change. Sampai sikah, karena pindah ke ni pasar sarapan di dalam ram, pindah ni bagi sahut tinggal.